Let's do it. Yay. All right. Um, let's see. Brian, do you want to get started or should I introduce everyone? Oh, why don't you go ahead, Vivian? Okay. <laughs> Good morning from California. My name is Vivian White and I'm with the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, as is Brian Cruz up here at the top with the really nice um, shades. <laughs> uh, everybody here knows Rosa and I want to inter introduce Coral Clark who's coming to us from SOFIA, the NASA Airborne <laughs> Observatory. And uh, SOFIA does infrared astronomy in uh, the Earth's uh, upper, no, lower atmosphere. I'll let her tell you more about it. <laughs> Flying a, a large plane with a telescope looking out the side of it. Um, so uh, this is in conjunction with the talk we just had last week by Dana Backman. So you can find that uh, probably along with wherever you're finding this. Also, you can find it on the NASA Night Sky Network website if you look under webinars. Uh, so I'm thrilled to have Coral join us and I'll let her get started. She's gonna give us a really cool activity, show us um, some infrared uh, information. I'm gonna mute myself. Go ahead, Coral. All right, well, thank you so much, Vivian, and welcome from California, everyone. Uh, I am thrilled to be here today and um, going to share with you uh, in a couple of very, very quick activities that you can do that highlight infrared and support electromagnetic spectrum across the spectrum, astronomy or uh, teaching and, and learning in any way that, that you do it formally, informally, or um, just because the world is cool. Um, I'm going to build on what Dr. Dana Backman, who I work with, I'm, I'm with the SETI Institute, and uh, we support outreach and, and education in conjunction with SOFIA, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. So I know that Dana did an awesome job at uh, covering uh, all the aspects of, of Sophia, but just very, very quickly, I'm going to do extremely low tech today and common. That's, that's kind of who I am. Uh, so I have some lithographs that I'm going to show as part of, of my visuals. And one of the reasons I'm also showing these and using these is all of them are available for print. Um, if you go to the Sophia website, so just NASA Sophia, bring up at uh, USRA, NASA Sophia, USRA.edu or edu slash Sophia, something like that. <laughs> and, um, and you will find all kinds of printables and wonderful resources as well. So this is an image of, of Sophia. She's a highly modified 747 SP with a 2.5 meter telescope um, on board and a great big hole in the side of the aircraft that you can actually uh, drive a car through. It's that big. So this is an engineering marvel putting a telescope that can maintain targeting um, on an object the size of a dime from a mile away while going through si slight turbulence even. And thank you, thank you for Brian, <laughs> sophia.usra.edu. Okay, yeah, I should know that off the top of my head. I just always do a Google search, right? <laughs> um, or it's, it's, in, my, it's in, my, in my cache, right? My, my common ones that I go to. So, um, this is the aircraft that goes up to the stratosphere, that's the above the troposphere, and we do that so that we can get above the water vapor. Now, um, electromagnetic spectrum is huge. Very few parts of that spectrum actually make it down to the surface. Part of that is the visual, and that's why, uh, that's why our eyes are tuned to that. But when you look at the universe in the other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, like for example, this is I can, you can't see that. Can you? Um, this is Orion, and if you uh, if you look at the that portion of the sky in the infrared, it looks incredibly different, and that is because we're able to see the gas and the dust, or through the gas and dust, depending on what frequencies we're looking at, and able to see all kinds of things that are giving off infrared light, which is uh, less energetic. Than, than visible. Can you guys see me? I mean, I'm on your big screen. Is that good? Okay. Okay. Because I'm just tiny. Is it? They... Yep. I'm good. Just remember to slow down so everybody can hear you in the translation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that gentle reminder, Vivian. I was telling Brian that uh, speaking slowly is not 
any part of, of my fabric of being. So, um, so amazing astronomy and astrophysics is being done by Sophia. They fly um, three, to, three to four times a week when they're doing their observations, 10 hour flights overnight. And uh, trying to bring this information back into the classroom is, is or uh, to, the, to people so that they can understand it, we want to use something that they're familiar with. So if only we had an easy way of detecting and, uh, and connecting the world with infrared, well, you do. These are remote controls, okay? These are things that people use all the time. Um, well, if you have a tell, most people use them all the time. They're very familiar with them, and they may have noticed that they're kind of magic, right? They're like a Harry Potter magic wand. You point it, you push something, and something happens with the television set. But if you look at the end with your eyes, and if you look at the end, nothing is happening. Okay. So the reason that that is the case is the LED that is in here is actually producing in the infrared. And then there is a detector in the television that picks up that infrared. Well, lucky for us, there are ways that we can detect that and see that, not with our own eyes, but with CCDs that are in computers and in telephones and other uh, instruments that can detect those wavelengths. So I'm going to point this here and push. And hey, look at that. And you can see you can see that, right? Um, very easy to show people. They're just amazed. It's like, no, I'm not seeing it with my eyes. I'm seeing it on the screen, right? Other ones, um, that one works. Let's see. And this one I found, which is my fanciest remote. Um, actually, I'm pushing a couple of the buttons now, so you're not seeing those. But this one, you can see. So in this situation, this is such a complicated uh, a system with um, a DVR that records the video from the uh, television that it has multiple frequencies that it uses. And the CCD in this particular computer only picks up that one. So having a variety of remotes and ways that students or people, you know, people that you're working with can test these, they can test variables, which buttons work, which ones don't. They can also, if you don't have uh, computers available, but you do have your, your cell phones, uh, they also, the CCD that picks up that light is also sensitive to uh, 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 certain just beyond the visible, right? Um, we have noticed that with uh, Apple's iPhones, the rear facing camera or the regular facing camera, no longer, it, 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 they've made it better and clearer by filtering out that infrared. Um, but the, and this is going to be kind of hard to show, but I'm going to show it, the, the, the selfie cam, right? That one, oh, this is, this is interesting. <laughs> All right, oh, no, I'm facing it the wrong way. That, that works, squirrel. Okay, I did test this. There. Okay, so again, it's being picked up by this one. This is one of those cases where the cheaper cameras, the cheaper cell phones actually pick this up better. But it's another variable that people can test. Which buttons on the remote? Do all remotes work this way? Which cameras work on your cell phone? Do some cell phones work and others do not? So in that way, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very wonderful to have an opportunity to connect this to something students, people use all the time and with their devices that, you know, they're so smart, um, we don't understand how they work anymore, right? Um, so another thing that you can 
look at is filters. Um, this is a bag, right, a garbage bag, and it is opaque to the visible. We can't see through it. Um, I'm going to pull this up here. This might be a little bit difficult to see. Got to push the right button. Can everyone see that one? Okay, so this is a situation where the, um, the object or the, the material is opaque in the visible, but it is uh, transparent in the infrared. Let me show my glasses. This is something um, that is transparent. In the, in the visible. If you look at a thermal infrared camera, I mean infrared, uh, yeah, infrared camera like the kind that they're selling now, FLIR has one that connects to a cell phone. They're being very, they're very common now. Seek also has one. That thermal, we glow in that. If you look at, at humans, we glow many different, uh, different temperatures at so different frequencies. Um, and these are, are opaque in, that, in those frequencies. So let's see if they are, if, if this material they make glasses out of is transparent or opaque to the frequencies emitted by this, this LED. Okay, so this is transparent, but opaque in another part of the infrared spectrum. So this is uh, an important thing for uh, people doing infrared astronomy and astrophysics to remember because there are so many the infrared part of the spectrum is huge um, significantly larger than the than the visible so this is another one of the shareables that you can get on the website what one of the things that makes Sophia so wonderful and unique is that we have this two and a half meter bucket light bucket that we gather the light with. And then astrophysicists can um, compete for observatory time, telescope time, on different instruments depending on what they're looking for. Everything glows in what it is, right? Like in, just like a neon sign. If, if you're looking at a, a neon sign and it really has neon in it, do the spectroscopy, you're able to find out it is neon inside that sign are inside that tube. And the same thing happens for the materials and, and um, in, in space, they glow in whatever they are in the infrared and we can, um, we can look for specific materials knowing what their spectral fingerprints are. So Sophia has multiple instruments, we can change those out. They're specifically tuned to certain parts of the, of the infrared spectrum. And we're able to upgrade those instruments um, with incredible frequency. We can do it a new, a new instrument every single year. That is a huge advantage to a space-based telescope. You cannot do this kind of infrared astronomy from the surface of the Earth. It needs to be above that water vapor because otherwise it just would, would that information would be absorbed. So we get above the water vapor or you can go into space. If you send, an, send it into space, you can't change the instruments. So huge advantage of SOFIA. We can also cool the telescope, uh, uh, do cryogenic processes on the telescope so that it doesn't run out of coolant, which space-based telescopes run out in five years. We're able to do that every time it comes home. So the observatory can run for 20 years, up to 20. We're excited about that. So I'm going to show uh, one more thing and then um, bring it back to a couple more information, bits of information about the instruments. I'm doing okay with my speed, right? I'm trying to slow down, but oh, look at that. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. You know, I'm doing something that's not visual. So um, this is a little less common but it's not incredibly uncommon and it's also a good way to illustrate that there's that information that's being sent out by the remote controls that can be picked up and then processed this is the cheapest solar cell that you can possibly get it picks up visible light and changes it into uh, in, into electricity 
I've connected this, you can see high tech, <laughs> two little alligator clips, some stripped wire, and this is a tiny amplifier. It's not a speaker, it's an amp, it's got to be an amp. Um, I, they actually make, you can get these on Amazon, um, little tiny Fender amps. They're so cute, they even go to 11. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm going to turn this on. I'm hoping you can hear that. Hoping I need, I need another hand. Yay. Um, and I'm going to point this here. Everybody hear that? And that again, you can't see this with your eyes, pushing the magic wand button. And with this, you can actually see that the different buttons produce different different frequencies and different patterns in that. But it's transferred. Also, another good way of connecting, um, showing that it is energy. Energy can be transferred, and then it can also it can be detected and then and then transferred. Um, and then with that, you can also do the uh, transmission and an opacity uh, kinds of investigations. All right, now finally I'm going to show, bring this back to a couple more pieces of information that are available on the Sophia website, which Brian Cruz showed, sophia.usra.edu. Um, each instrument has, if you're, if you're at this, this level, has uh, detailed information on the instruments designed for scientists and astrophysicists. And so this also it, it gives uh, the, the channel parameters, frequency information, some examples of the kinds of uh, um, research that has been done using that instrument. And we have one of these available for each of the instruments. This is the great instrument. and It is a German instrument that's a spectrometer. And uh, this was, uh, instrument was used to recently map the atomic oxygen on Mars. It did that in one night. Um, it was the first time I think that had been ever accomplished. This is another example of another one of our, our uh, spectrographs. So the Im information that it, the astrophysicists get looks like this, right? It's, spec it's spectroscopy, they're getting spectral lines. But that is how they need to have that information given to them so they can analyze it and they can determine what elements they're looking for in this situation. It's usually elements they're looking for. Um, so again, easy stuff all around us, infrared um, that is, is produced. Uh, very exciting to, to have these new cameras, the flares and the seeks, remembering that the frequencies are different. If I tried to use, to point this at one of the thermal cameras, which I could not find mine this morning, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you can't see it in those spectral, in, in, in that part of the, of the spectrum. So very important to remember, there's a, there's a huge, huge spectrum of light, and it very much depends on which part of that spectrum you're looking at. In order to understand what's really going on in the universe, we need to look at the whole thing. Sophia specializes in the infrared. The only kind of astronomy you can re that really lends itself to being aboard an aircraft. Uh, okay, I think I'm done. Did you have any questions, or do I do that? Did you want to open it up for questions? Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. That was so amazing. I knew that that was infrared, but I had no idea. I just love when you put it all together. And I love love. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Those tests are really neat. Um, I've heard that through curtain windows, you might not be able to see it. Different types of glass, glass opaque, opaque, the different, mm -hmm. different different infrared. That that actually is why there needs to be a hole in the aircraft because uh, anything that they would normally use. Because because it, it's a hole. There's a it's a huge <laughs> it's a it's a hole in the aircraft. So there's a bulkhead so that the you know the the uh, the people operating the mission don't get sucked out because that would be a bummer. 
but uh, the the hole is is really there, and it it was very difficult to engineer this aircraft so that it could fly with a big hole inside of it. You can imagine. I mean, you rolled your window down in a car going fast. It affects the way that the car operates and and ev and everything else. So the vi and the vibrations, the all the materials that they would normally use to make windows in an aircraft are completely opaque to the to the parts of the spectrum we're looking at. So it would not have made any sense. The only material we could have used was a diamond, <laughs> and the U.S. Congress wouldn't fund that. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> 2020 hindsight, it might have been cheaper to use a diamond than the research taken to, in order to get the, uh, the, the airflow so it didn't affect the fuselage, but that's Congress for you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for presenting that. It was really good to hear from you in particular who worked so much with it. Um, Rosa, I think there's a couple of things you want to talk about before. We uh, and I'm going to mute mine again because I have some um, back and forth two shakes. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot for this uh, amazing presentation. I adore the, the, the material, the exercises, and I'm 100% sure that teachers that are going to watch it, they're going to say, oh, that's how they do it. Let me do it in classroom. It's going to be, I mean, it's the kind of activities that, uh, you know, make the kids really want to know why. Why are these things like that, you know? And uh, I really adored all of them. Thank you very much. I think that was very inspirational. And uh, um, I think I, I need to share my screen uh, with you. Let me try it out and see how this works. Okay, do you see my screen? Okay, good. So I, I don't want to, to take a lot of time and uh, also, I think Coral did an, an excellent job, but I had this uh, uh, material already separated for presenting today because, you know, I, I visit many schools all over the world and there are a few things that are very common to everywhere you go, no matter where in the world you are, these questions pop up, you know, you, you always have these people that uh, have solved everything there is to know about science, they found the new planets, new theories, but uh, when it comes to kids, this question is something that appears so, so, so often when you're presenting, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum and you show this picture, for instance, of the Milky Way. They ask me, well, which one is true? And uh, this is a very interesting question because we tend to think that uh, what we see is the truth. The rest is not. It's our common sense. And it's very hard to, to tell people that... Uh, we only see a very minor thing of everything there is to see and that is very hard. It was hard for scientists to discover there are so many different wavelengths and how to work with them, how to see using, you know, not our eyes, but some other devices. So I like this image very much because when I have to answer that question, this is the perfect one. All of this is true. And if we could use the same equipments on us, we would equally be very different in different wavelengths. And that is very confusing to them to imagine that, uh, you know, someone could look to them with different eyes and see something that is completely different than everything we imagine. So um, I then go uh, to the point where I explain why we see in, in, in the visible. And uh, I challenge them to think about uh, a planet that is around uh, an infrared star and uh, that we wouldn't see colors we would see only heat so that's like you know how do you buy a dress uh, in in a shopping you know you cannot choose colors you can oh my my dress is is warmer than yours you know so that is something that i, I think it's, it's interesting and capture their interest you know to to the knowledge because heat uh, the infrared the, the heat is something that uh, you can feel you don't see but you can feel uh, unlike many other kind of, uh, of uh, uh, pieces of the electromagnetic spectrum. Then I have uh, this uh, interesting exercise. I try to, to mimic it. Uh, I probably failed miserably, but I will do it anyway. Uh, by using some of the imagery of the WISE satellite, because it's infrared image, 
but the code color they use, you know, we discussed this before that in astronomy, most of the colors are fake. Sorry to bring that so abruptly, but we, we've been there before. And uh, the, co the code color they use are very good to, 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 to the low cost uh, 3D images, the, the, the anaglyphs. So I try to mimic it. And I have uh, a few images here. Let me see if I can uh, make it a, a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit. But it's a very good exercise for you to do with your students in classroom because it shows, so this is the, comp the on the left is the composition of, uh, of the, the three filters that, uh, the different filters that, uh, that they use. But when you use, you know, the cellophane or, or jelly papers in different countries, they call it different names. Uh, if you put in front of your eyes, one of these colors, you see the same image you see different parts of the image. It's like if you put a filter on it. And this is something that I like very much that you can also use the, the infrared uh, imagery of WISE to explain that to the students. So you can navigate through several of these images and you see the same picture. I have the same picture below the transparent color, as you can see. I just put you know, the, the, the jelly paper on top of it. And uh, of course, this is not jelly paper, but uh, if I would, and you see different parts of the imagery. So I think this is a, another very nice exercise that you can do with your students. So this is the original picture, and then I cover it with the blue one, or I cover it with the red one, and you see I see different things. Uh, there is another one, I think this is the one. Yeah, look, look the difference in one color or the other. So this is something that has a, a high impact on the students if you do that uh, with this uh, low cost uh, material. So you see different parts and you can explain why is it that scientists will choose to study in that uh, particular wave band and not another because you know of the part of the imagery they are interested in. And uh, I also um, have another example, which is from European Hands on Universe. They have a, a very nice set of exercise. This one is called the uh, homemade uh, spectroscope. Actually, in ASP, you have uh, very nice examples also how to build uh, a homemade spectroscope. It doesn't matter how you build it. It's just uh, there are different uh, recipes uh, to, to make it. I like this one because uh, it simulates like, uh, because it's uh, you're using uh, the CD, you peel off uh, the CD and you can put it in a tube and it, it's like, a, it's a card, cardboard tube and you can decorate it however you want. It's very easy to assemble. And we have this uh, information in Portuguese already in the website where all the material is, you will find this information in, in Portuguese. And with this, you can point it to a, a lamp and find out the different uh, uh, colors the, that you cannot see with uh, your, your eyes. I just wanted to share this uh, material because this is material that uh, we've been using in our activities that I think uh, have a very high impact. And uh, to remind everyone that uh, we have a special page in the, the Galileo Teacher Training Program website where you find the ASP GTTP webinars. And uh, you will find here uh, the, the version in, in, in English and the version in uh, Portuguese and if you are willing to translate it to your national language let us know we will find a way to to provide the, the original format to you so you can also localize it to your uh, special to, to the needs of uh, your country I guess that's it from my side vision pleasure to be here with all of you it's all always an honor it's such a pleasure having another one of these thank you Coral <laughs> Thank you. Bye, you guys. We'll see you next time. Okay. Next time. Next month, we're back. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.